Welcome back to another episode of Stupid Geek Tricks, where we show you how to use a computer that cost $10 brand new, something like eight years ago, and we actually turn this into a host for AI systems. That's right, we're no longer using the powerful Pi 5. We are actually using a Raspberry Pi Zero W version one with the, uh, with the nefarious uh, ARM V6 uh, architecture so uh so this is actually pretty cool so this is this is a little computer so this is a full-fledged computer has a single core one gigahertz processor has 512 megs of ram i think it has an 802.11n uh, uh wireless connection and basically this is kind of the system that we set up before for the raspberry pi uh five uh, so we have a microphone here off of one of the dongles Again, this is truly dongle hell here. Uh, but we have a raspberry, or we have a microphone here. Uh, we have a speaker here, and, and then we have our LED setups. And basically, so what's happening is when I talk into the microphone, that voice is going up to Google's a voice API. The text is then coming back down to the system. That text uh, is then sent to OpenAI's API, so it goes back off a of system again. We get the response back, and then we use something called eSpeak uh, for the computer to actually be able to speak to us. And then we have the nice LEDs and everything. This is, this is a hell of a thing. Look at this, look at this. So we just, uh, we just run this little thing. Takes a second. It's a potato. There we go. How much chuck could wood chuck chuck if wood chuck could chuck wood? How much chuck could a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? A wood chuck wood chuck as much wood as a wood chuck could chuck if it could chuck wood. How do you cook a wood chuck? How do you cook a wood chuck? Cook a wood chuck by roasting or slow cooking after cleaning and seasoning thoroughly. You'll notice open air allows you to ask that question. Should you eat a woodchuck with ketchup or barbecue sauce? Should you eat a woodchuck with ketchup or barbecue sauce? Eat a woodchuck with barbecue sauce for a sweeter, smoky flavor that complements the meat better than ketchup. Fair enough. If Lewis Rossman and a woodchuck got into a fight, who would win? If Louis Rossman and a woodchuck got into a fight, who would win? Louis Rossman would win with his tech skills. Woodchuck's fight isn't nearly that tough. Look at that. So basically, this is all... You know, we have this little thing running, running uh, off of this device. And so this is the power. When I talk about systems architectures, I think a lot of people don't quite grasp what I'm talking about with systems architectures. Basically, what we are doing here is we are using a $10 computer to access essentially, you know, God knows, gazillion dollar supercomputers, but this is all we need on our side. Uh, and the cost for this is incredibly small. So uh, Network Chuck, I just saw this video uh, from Network Chuck where for some reason, I don't know, Apple has been sending uh, all of these influencers, these, uh, these, um, uh, uh, for a cluster of four Mac studios with something like 512 gigs of RAM in them. And that costs $50,000. Think about that. To buy that cluster, no matter how good it is, it costs you $50,000 $50, to buy that. The, key, the cool thing about this, right, is every time I run one of these requests, it costs me a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a cent. It's something like uh, it's something like a buck 50 for a million tokens at this point. So a million tokens is 750,000 words. 750,000 words of processing response costs you a buck 50. How, how many how many of those t does it does it take to get to fifty thousand dollars right so I can I can take this little ten dollar computer here I can access their systems for fractions of a fraction of a penny per request and and I can actually you know get a pretty decent response here you will will notice at this point it is a little bit slow but again it is a one gigahertz uh, single core processor with uh, 512 megs of RAM and to be clear not only is this a small computer this is actually old this is a v1 uh, so V1 came out, 
I don't know, again, they might actually be even like 10 years old. So this was, a, this was a cheap computer like 10 years ago, and now it's 10 years old. Now, this does use the V6 architecture, which is a complete and utter disaster. So VS Code, when you try to connect a VS Code over SSH to this thing, uh, that fails. Uh, what else did we have? We had some, oh, web browsers, a no, no mod modern web browser will run on this thing because of V6 architecture. And also one of the weird, weird things is the uh, open AI module, the Python module actually fails being installed on this thing. Again, for some reason, because of that V6 architecture, uh, I, I did just order to, um, of the uh, version two uh, of the Raspberry Pi Zero W. So they come with the V8 architecture. So that will hopefully fix that kind of problem. But the way you get around that is uh, it's, it's called curl. There's something called curl. Basically with curl, you can use essentially a URL. It's kind of like a post or a get sort of. <laughs> more complicated. But anyways, along those lines, essentially the idea though is you can simply use a request module or a curl module if you want to do it. And basically you can make the request that way. Uh, so what I did here is instead of using the OpenAI module to connect to OpenAI's AI's API, I used curl to do that. This is also uh, the important thing with understanding what a technology professional is, right? Understanding how to use the OpenAI module is relatively simple. Understanding how to use curl is relatively simple. Understanding Linux is relatively simple. Why we get paid what we do and what we, we actually do is we figure out what tool is required with the resources that we currently have, right? So I try to install the OpenAI module onto this and it failed. So I don't, as a technology professional, I don't, I don't get to say, okay, whatever, it failed, I'm leaving. No, I gotta figure out how to make this thing work. And so that's where it's like, okay, well, if the OpenAI module failed, what other way can I use to connect uh, to their services? And then I realized that I had seen that they had some documentation for curl. Normally I don't worry about curl because it's fucking curl, I don't worry about it. Anyways, but hey, curl, curl, curl uses the request module, that's a different thing, so maybe curl would work. And so that's what I tried and now it works pretty well. So anyways, uh, there you go. If you, uh, if you want to learn how to uh, barbecue your woodchuck, <laughs> you too can create this project. These are this, uh, I am literally building this particular project uh, for the uh, Silicon Dojo class that we kept, have coming up on January 7th. Again, basically we're, we're doing the class on pushing AI to the edge uh, using Raspberry Pis. And the idea here isn't specifically the Raspberry Pi one way or the other, but it's the, the concept of how do you design artificial intelligence systems using like no fucking resource like no resources like to call this thing a potato this is a mini this is a mini old potato right this isn't fifty thousand uh, dollar cluster from apple this is a this is a 10 year old potato how do you actually do something worthwhile with this and so this is the kind of stuff that we teach at silicon dojo and the class that's coming up anyways with that see you all later i'm very excited very excited i got this little thing working